In the year 2000, the film Traffic wowed critics and collected four Academy Awards, including one for Best Adapted Screenplay by Stephen Gagan. This is Ginger Thompson for the New York Times. The Traffic screenplay is grounded in the violent reality of the war on drugs, a fight that continues to vex authorities on both sides of the border. Perhaps that's why 13 years after the film was released, traffic still feels so relevant. Mr. Gagan's storyline revolves around a powerful Mexican general who is found to be colluding with drug traffickers. This character is based on a real Mexican general, Jesus Gutierrez Rebollo. But what Gagan didn't know is that the Mexican police officer played by Benicio del Toro also resembles a real person, a man named Luis Octavio Lopez Vega. Mr. Lopez is the main character in a story I've been writing for the past few months. Like the character in Traffic, Mr. Lopez was a Mexican policeman allied with a powerful general. He was also secretly working with the DEA. But that's where the similarities end. Mr. Lopez's story turns out to be much more agonizing than Hollywood's version. I went to Los Angeles to meet Stephen Gagan, the screenwriter of Traffic, to talk about the fine line between documentary and fiction in the film. He told me how he researched Benicio del Toro's character. I was able to meet a police officer, very high-ranking police officer in Tijuana. And at one point he said this, to my ears, very staggering thing. He said, he said, well, you know, Steve, the life expectancy of an honest police officer in Tijuana is six weeks. And I looked at him and I, I said, but, but you, you've been on the force for 18 years. And he said, exactly. Yeah. And he looked me in the eye. And uh, it, it, the drug war instantly got a thousand times more complicated. And I, um, I went back a little bit back to the drawing board on the character. So now that you have what you want, Let's talk about how I get what I want. Mr. Del Toro's character is a good man stuck in a corrupt system. In this scene, he passes a polygraph exam, providing information to the DEA. In fact, this happened in real life to Mr. Lopez. Oh, yeah, Javier, you should feel good about this. I feel like a traitor. Yeah, he feels great because he, he knows he's won the the war on drugs. It's right, like over. Right, right, he's won. Well, th my character, when column. I watched this with him, he said that's exactly how I feel. He hates the word informant because he feels being an informant is sort of the equivalent of being a traitor. None of the Mexican law enforcement I've ever spoken to like the idea of having to work with the gringos. Connecting the dots between the film and real life, I went to Denver to talk with Ralph Villarruel, a former DEA agent who worked with Mr. Lopez and helped convince him to provide details to the U.S. about high-ranking Mexican officials who were taking payoffs from traffickers. We knew they were receiving payoffs, but when you're talking about $80 million payoffs, it was, to me at that time, it was like, wow, that's, that's a lot of money. You know, and it's like, we need help. And uh, <laughs> this, this is really, a, you know, it, it's out of control. It's out of control. In the movie, the information Del Toro provides the DEA leads to a takedown of a powerful trafficking network in Mexico. Mr. Del Toro announces the arrests with DEA agents at his side. Then reality diverges from Hollywood, says Mr. Villarruel. I, I didn't understand that one. Is he giving a press conference? I don't understand that. Giving a press conference surrounded by the DEA yeah, in Mexican, in Mexican territory. Yeah, it doesn't. Can't happen. No. The Mexican government suspected Lopez of colluding with the crooked general, and Mr. Lopez fled the country with the help of the DEA. Once he was in the United States, he became an informant. What happened next was a dizzying chain of events. Mexico issued a warrant for Mr. Lopez's arrest. The DEA severed ties with him, and Mr. Lopez became a fugitive. He uh, cooperates with us. He does everything he's 
told to. He'll testify. He'll, you know, takes a polygraph, and then a provisional arrest warrant is issued with him. And then we just, I'm just told to make him disappear. And while you have the remaining family, that what do you do with them also? Mr. Villarruel felt responsible since the DEA had brought the Lopez family to the United States, promising them protection in exchange for information. He's been able to uh, just stay underground and with no legal, like in limbo. I mean, he can't go over there and he's, not, he's illegal here, so he's, he's like in limbo and just, just hiding. I've met with Mr. Lopez, who lives under a false identity in the Western United States. He told me he rarely watches traffic because it's a painful reminder of his past. In the movie, Benicio del Toro returns to Mexico, a country where Mr. Lopez is still wanted 15 years later. I asked screenwriter Stephen Gagan why they chose to end the film in such a seemingly optimistic way. I just think he's, this says happy ending to me. Although I guess his face, Look at that look. I mean, think about this moment if you're this guy. I mean, what is that? Come on. Heaven? It's a beautiful moment. Uh, it's a very small m moment, an interstice where you're going to get uh, a tiny little victory. There's no way this guy even makes it to the baseball field after having done what he did. I think he makes it to the baseball field, he just doesn't make it home. <laughs>